I love woodworking. What better place to learn about woodworking hand tools than at the studio of a fine craftsman? We're here at J. Miller Handcrafted Furniture where they create some stunningly beautiful furniture and use amazing tools. So we're gonna get some tips on what you can use and how to take care of them. Jeff Miller is a furniture designer and craftsman known for beautiful chairs with sweeping curved lines and he teaches the craft to aspiring furniture makers. So Jeff, if I had to say there was a go-to tool in your shop here, would you say it's the chisel? The chisel is, is the simplest tool in the shop. It's just a sharpened wedge. But with something so simple comes great versatility. I love these tools. <laughs> I, mean, I really do. Uh, there are three main types we deal with. There's a bench chisel, which is the versatile sort of do everything tool. Right. One of these is a mortise chisel with parallel sides and a little steeper bevel designed to get whacked down into the wood, chopping basically rectangular slots. And then I've got pairing chisels, which are designed for just slicing away wood. I would never put a hammer to the end of this. I sharpen it at a shallower angle so that it's easier for me to tear away the wood. But the key thing is always sharpness. And just as much, that's true for the hand plane. This is the fastest way to smooth out wood. It also gives me incredible control because I'm taking off two, three, four thousandths of an inch at a time. The sound is fun. These shavings are kind of cool. And then the finish is more or less done. Watching you use that plane, I'm thinking about all the people that pay all this money to go to these gym for these arm workouts, that if you just did some planing, you could save some money, and at the end of the day, you'd have a beautiful piece of furniture. Now, that, what's <laughs> so interesting about that is that if you treat it like an arm workout, you'll exhaust yourself. Right. What I'm doing is more of a leg workout. Interesting. I push with my back leg. And it's almost like I'm lunging forward right. when I'm doing this. Even with chisels, because they're such simple things, they're an extension of your body and you wanna use your body correctly. So the tools that Jeff uses are highly specialized. I mean, this is how he makes his living, making furniture. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about some tools that you might find helpful and useful in your own home, in particular, when it comes to cutting wood. Now this is a an example of a carpenter's saw. It's a versatile saw, what they call a cross cut. If you were gonna cut a one by six or something like that, this saw would do a really nice job. It's got very aggressive, sharp teeth on the bottom, as you can see. Now, some specialty blades. Uh, this particular one is what they call a reversing back saw. The whole idea is that you can slice things really close to the floor or the ground with a, kind of a fine tooth pattern on there, so it's a little bit finer cut. And then finally, a coping saw. You know, if you're doing any kind of crown molding or trim work where you have to get that 45 degree angle or 22 degree angle, those angles in a home really don't exist because nothing is square. With a coping saw, you have the ability to cut around wood and actually shape it so that when you bring the two pieces together, it's a perfect fit. All right, Jeff's got one more tip for us when it comes to keeping things sharp. What I'm showing you here in terms of sharpening is I've got some different grits of sandpaper that are stuck down to a piece of glass. So what I need to do is rub this against first the coarsest grit and then the finer grits. One way I've done this is I work with some of these very simple jigs. This one here is something you can pick up for around $15 and it just helps hold the tool the same way every single time. What I'm gonna do is move back and forth on this. The jig means that I can go in both directions. Once I've got that, I can move on to the next grit. And I'll keep going until I've created a little bit of a burr at the edge. When I'm done with the four grits here, I lay the chisel down carefully on the finest grit and I just work the back a little bit. That gets rid of any remnant of the burr and then I wind up with a super sharp edge. This paring chisel that Jeff has in his studio is over 100 years old. Imagine the craftsman that held this in their hand. It's amazing. Now we've just covered the tip of woodworking hand tools. If you wanna learn more, you should see if there are any woodworking classes that are offered in your area. And who knows, you could have a 100-year-old chisel in your hand as well.